Tonight, we're going into a place of darkness, but also of light. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. So preserving limb and surviving limb loss, resuming an active and productive life. Dr. Douglas Smith is a professor of orthopedic surgery out of Harborview Medical Center. Uh, he's also on staff at the University of Washington Medical Center and the Veterans Administration Puget Sound Healthcare System in Seattle. His many functions include serving on the research committee of the Foot Care Council of the American Diabetes Association and is a board member of the Orthopedic Rehab Association. He's a medical director of the Amputee Coalition of America and director of the Prosthetic Research Study. And Dr. Smith serves as a consultant to the United States military at a Walter Reed Army Amputee Care Program. He's editor of the Atlas of Limb Prosthetics and Amputation Surgery in its third edition and has presented at numerous medical meetings. His accomplishments include developing footwear to prevent diabetic foot ulcerations, which are a direct precursor to a diabetic patient losing their limb, as well as directing a prosthetic research study dedicated to advancing the function of the amputee and preserving the limb at risk. He graduated with a bachelor's degree from the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. Smith also received his medical degree at the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine. He completed his residency at Loyola University Medical Center in Maywood, Illinois, and a fellowship in foot, ankle, and amputation surgery with Dr. Sigvard Hansen at Harborview Medical Center and Ernest M. Burgess. Before I have Dr. Smith come up, come up we have a video to show you. And the video was shown on Evening Magazine, and it concerns a young gentleman who uh, was a victim of a, a motorboat accident this past summer. So I'm going to close this up, and if we could get the video started, that would be wonderful. Welcome back everyone to Kirkland. You probably saw the story on the news last August. 16 year old boy run over by a boat that his sister was driving. And that was it. The nature of news is they do the story for a minute 30 and maybe they do a follow up the following day, but they must move on to the next story. Nothing against news, that's just how news works. Evening Magazine for 20 years tells the story what happens after the news cameras leave. The story of Chandler Bachman and his recovery. Now that's where this story begins. Here's Kim Griffiths. It was a perfect summer evening on Lake Sammamish. A dad and son raced to that buoy out there, as they often did, neither knowing their lives were about to drastically change. I saw the boat after it went past me and realized that it was right in the area where, where Chandler was. Chandler Balkman's sister, Jessica, was driving the family boat and didn't see Chandler swimming. Chandler came back up and he said, Dad, I've been hit and I'm not going to be able to stay afloat. I need help. For Steve and Jeff Balkman, the details three months later are as clear as the August evening when it all happened. I grabbed my brother and picked him up into the canoe and I immediately could tell that there's a lot of blood and that his leg had been severed. 16-year-old Chandler, the athlete, Eagle Scout, skier since the time he could walk, was dying. I actually assumed that my brother was dead at that point. They carried him into the house and onto the basement floor. This nice beige tile floor was completely red after a few minutes. Uh, blood was just everywhere. Chandler thought he was dying too. He told me to tell his mother that he loved her and to tell his sister that it was not her fault and that everything would be okay. Chandler was rushed to Harborview in a condition most people do not survive. About two thirds or three quarters of, of his total blood volume probably had been lost. He made it through the night, but he was very sick and in a coma for two weeks. His family knew long before he did, his right leg had to be amputated at the hip. At that point, there was just no way that this was a, you know, a leg that could be, could be saved. Waking up without a leg, how would this active, athletic teenager respond to losing his ability to hike, to play sports, to run? I decided, I said I can either be grieving and mad for the rest of my life, or I can be optimistic from this point on, and that day, kind of said to myself, all right, let's 
go forward. Okay. Don't let that ankle roll. You wouldn't guess that a 16-year-old kid that just lost his leg would be so cheerful. And I think Chandler decided from the very beginning that, hmm, this happened, and let's make the best of it. Remember we talked about coming onto your knee? And make the best of it, he did. Instead of varsity tennis, his goals became simpler. There you go. Like learning to stand. You almost had it. Just a little stumble there. And so began the toughest physical and emotional challenge of his life. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. Okay. Yep, I'm fine. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. This was kind of the That's ultimate the challenge. Could we be positive about this? And honestly, Chandler led the way. I, I wanted to be sad some days. And I couldn't do that if he was willing to be positive about it. You know, so I had to kind of just, um, okay, I can do this. One more day. Chandler can do it. I can do it. Up you go. In addition to amputating his leg, the propeller also sliced into Chandler's other foot and broke bones and severed tendons in his hand. Yeah, I'm trying to break up the scar tissue. It required at times painful therapy, some 20 surgeries, and the one thing Chandler didn't have, patience. Ah. Being stuck in the hospital. Okay, so no that flexible. Nope. Week after week. I'll probably get calluses in my hands, yeah. which is good. Hands, For see. 10 weeks. Oh, looking a lot stronger there. Really? Yeah. Made being homesick a symptom that needed yeah. fixing. Been here. I've been here too long. That's why he was granted a get out of the hospital free card for a few hours. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be here. It's not that not, not nice of a day, but I don't even care. I am so happy. He hasn't been home since the night of the accident. Yeah. The visit is good for his spirit. Oh. But the main purpose of this field trip oh. hey, Grandma. is to see how Chandler does getting around the house. Hey, but I can do it. I can do it. Good. Well, at least there's one bathroom you can get into. His bedroom is on the top level. His parents suggested he switch rooms with his younger sister on the main floor. Okay. No way. Chandler. <laughs> one at a time, don't do two. Chandler is so thrilled to be home, back in his own room. Yeah, check it out, man. I got no leg now. <laughs> Appreciating every no, detail. It's good to see my clothes. <laughs> and getting some family time. Wow, that was so weak. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you did it, uh, Chandler's not too bad. But you did it. The visit is wonderful, but short. Oh, this will be hard to go back. He has to go back to Harborview. He has more healing to do, uh, physically and psychologically. I got hit by a boat and my leg, uh, my leg was cut, it was severed pretty high. An amputee support group meets every week. Some members lost limbs recently, some years ago. They share about life beyond the hospital and show Chandler he's not alone. It took a long time to go up the stairs for me because I had to learn how to balance on my knees. Chandler has to meet certain goals to earn his way home. And one by one, he checks them off his list. Yes. Awesome. Good job. Yes. I've never. You were okay, having trouble with that I got before. a lot stronger this week. Awesome. Mom has to work too to learn to care for his still deep wound as going home day finally arrives. Have fun going home. There will be some scary stuff and uh, just to let you know there will still be a little high and low in your spirits. You'll have a few times down in the dumps but you got good people around you. Take care. Big thumbs up. <laughs> on discharge day, a final meeting with his team of doctors and therapists makes sure Chandler's ready for the real world. Here we are today. You ready to go home? No, I think we should stay another couple of days. <laughs> I'm ready. Good job. More than ready. Congratulations. Thank you. Just a few final orders of business. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All traces of Chandler will be gone from room 457. And the Balkans are ready to roll. 
Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Exiting this hospital. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yes. They have the toughest two and a half months of their lives behind them. We can go home. And a lifetime of challenges ahead. So long, Harborview. A stay in the hospital and then months of therapy and three months later you can see that Chandler is doing well, recovering nicely. But what about his sister Jessica, who was the one that was driving the boat? Now she was not physically hurt, but the mental anguish that she suffered, well that's another story. The family says Jessica still has hard days, but she's doing well. Chandler has completely forgiven her, and everyone knows it was just an accident. And the family convinced Jessica to stick with her plans to study abroad this semester to go on with her life just as Chandler rebuilds his. Chandler is back in school now. He's using crutches and a wheelchair. And check out the incredible welcome back surprise he received. A standing ovation at an assembly where his classmates voted him junior class homecoming prince. It was an emotional day for everyone watching him up there on stage. Chandler will be fitted for a prosthetic leg. He'll go through some rehab with that. And then his new goal, a little spring skiing. The reason we actually chose to start with that video is it encompasses so many aspects of injury, uh, survival, healing, rehab. And I think it, it will bring us back many times tonight to many of the things that you actually saw in that video. Um, I'm Doug Smith. I uh, am an orthopedic surgeon. I work primarily over at Harborview. Um, thank you for the kind introduction. I really appreciate that. I have a number of jobs. I came to Harborview actually in 1989 for one year, and I'm still there. And many people don't realize Harborview has had programs devoted to the care for individuals with limb loss since the 60s. And one of the uh, nurses that helped found many of those programs is with us tonight. We'll join our panel, Dee Melkow. Prosthetics Research Study exists in Seattle. It's where the Seattle foot was invented. I'm pleased that I get to work there now. Uh, we wrote software to help design uh, manufacture sockets. And we have a website, which is referenced here, that has a lot of education for surgeons about how to do amputations. It's not an operation that a lot of surgeons uh, seen more as a difficult operation, one that's more of a failure. And the opposite needs to happen. It needs to be seen as positive and reconstruction. And our website for surgeons tries to do that, but it's something you all, as medical students now, can scan. The Amputee Coalition of America, another panel member, Laura Willingham, is with us. She's the regional representative for the, for the Amputee Coalition of America, a national organization dedicated for information, education, and advocacy. And I'm very lucky that I've gotten to serve as their medical director and try to write some articles that to try to give a point of view from the surgeon's point of view. And I have been very honored that I've got to help out a little bit and help the wonderful physicians helping our injured soldiers with the Army. The, the, the metal, military medicine is just doing an amazing job. I'd like to start out just by saying, as you saw from this video, this whole aspect of helping someone who has, uh, is facing limb loss or has had limb loss is a very big team approach. There is no one person on the team that can really do this. And if you'll notice, the, uh, the top of the list is the nurses. And I would actually say I've learned the most over my career from nurses like Dee Melkow, Mary Novotny, who is a nurse in Chicago that founded the Amputee Coalition of America, Patty Rosbach, who's the nurse that runs that organization now. You notice where they are. If you want a big organization, you want it to work, put a nurse in charge, not a surgeon. You know where surgeons are in the list. <laughs> um, but med students, the surgeon's one part of the team. And